What is up, everybody? It is your boy, Pigskin Pete. Happy Monday to everybody. Can you believe we're going into the eighth year of the college football playoff system? It seems to me like it just happened yesterday, but yes, 2014 uh, to through, through 2020 is seven years, and 2021 will be the eighth year. Now, uh, the, the number one most polarizing thing since the playoffs have started have been the question, is four teams enough? Uh, how, many, how many teams are too many? And everything in between. We hear everything from we need six teams, eight teams, 16 teams, uh, and even uh, these, these idiots like, uh, what's, that, what's, this, uh, what's this guy's name, uh, Lou? Um, this coach, you know what I'm talking about, Bigfoot? Mike Leach. Mike Leach. Mike Leach uh, vying for a 64-team playoff. And I don't, I don't know if this guy is trolling or what, but either, either way, uh, we, we hear everything. So uh, we're going to talk about the uh, the meeting that happened this past week uh, with the, what is this thing called here? It's called the College Football Playoff Management Committee. And I am joined uh, with my friend and uh, the Lunch Money co-host and college football YouTuber, Uncle Lou, to talk about this. What's up, Lou? Hey, what's up? But I appreciate you... Uh asking me to do this this will be good yeah so I, i'm sure you, we were talking off air just a minute ago and we're, we're both getting the same thing we're both getting we're at least i'm getting inundated with people asking my opinion on this and i'm sure that you probably are too it's the, it's one of the most asked questions i've had since i've been on youtube is my thoughts on playing i mean expanding the playoffs to a yay or nay and uh so i know that you've talked about it a lot over the years i've talked about it a lot over the years but this is the first time well, maybe I'm wrong. You can correct me if I'm wrong. I think this is the first time that the uh, the, the management committee has ever spoke about it. Uh, it's well, I'm sure there have been comments made in the past. I, I don't remember there being another time though where they they had actually had a meeting and announced it publicly uh, for the specific purpose of uh, looking at expansion scenarios. I, I don't remember anything like this happening before. All right, exactly. And so here's what I'm going to do real quick. I'm just going to read a short snippet of this uh, press release from ESPN that talks about what, what we're saying here. And then I'm going to and I have some questions for you. Um, so it says a working group of, within the CFP Management Committee, which comprises the 10 FBS commissioners plus Notre Dame Athletic Director Jack Swarbrick. And, and that's important. Uh, I'm going to come back to that, the, this, this management committee, the way it's comprised, because uh, it's important. But uh, they discussed some 63 possibilities for change. According to a news release from, from the CFP, those included models of 6, 8, 10, 12, and 16 teams, each with a variety of different scenarios. Uh, CFP Executive Director Bill Hancock told ESPN that nothing is imminent, but there will not be a new format this season or next season, he says. The timetable is certainly an important detail, but it hasn't been determined yet. It's too soon to predict the timing, but even if the board decides to alter the format, it may, it may well not occur. Hold on. I just lost my article here. Uh, it may well not occur until after the current agreement has expired, which isn't until after the 2025 season. So basically, he goes on to say some more stuff in, this, in, his, uh, in his quotes. Uh, he basically admits, he says, look, it's, it's inevitable. We're going to expand. The question is, how is that going to look? And of course, like I know I've been saying and you've been saying, there is not going to be a change between now and to when the first contract is up at, at the end of the 2025 season. So five more years. Um, any thoughts on that so far? Well, there's there's been kind of two uh, ideas that have floated around for a long time on the timetable you've got the 2025 thing which yeah the the playoff deal like you read there when it was initially announced was a 12-year deal so that would run through the end of the 2025 season however the tv deal expires in 2023 and in the past when changes have been made whether it was going from nothing to the bcs or from the BCS to the playoff, it always happened in a year where the TV deals were getting uh, redone because obviously um, the TV deals might not be the sole uh, factor that drives college football, but it's a huge determining sure. factor. 
And uh, you just take ESPN, for example, they're paying whatever they, whatever they're paying to broadcast the uh, playoffs. Mm -hmm. Well, if instead of having a total of three playoff games, which is what we have now, it doubles, shouldn't ESPN have to pay more? So usually these changes occur at the same time that the next TV contracts are being negotiated and go into effect. And later on in the article, it even mentions that. It, it, it okay. says, uh, I forget who's quoted. One of the people in there is quoted, and it says, we don't have to wait until the end of the 2025 season to do it. Okay. We could do it in two years. The only thing they say for sure in here is that it's not changing this year, and it's not changing – next year yeah which would be the 2023 year which um th th that's what i've been saying for a long time but i think it's going to change in 2020 i think we're getting a little ahead now with what we think is going to happen but, uh yeah. anyway uh yeah yeah so yeah and i agree and i've been saying the same thing to 2023 so i was confused whenever i whenever i read this and i obviously didn't i don't remember reading the part that you're talking about but it's not a well-written article. I yeah. had to read it about three. It's very confusing. It's hard to figure out at first who's on the management committee as now, opposed to who's on the entire committee. Uh, I yes. had to read it a couple so, of times. So, so let's get into that. Now, Now I've been saying 2023. I didn't I didn't realize there was two different deals, a TV deal and another deal, and one's 12 years, one was 10 years. I, did, I didn't even realize all of that until you just told me that. So that makes sense. As far as this – so this is, another, this is another great point you bring up. This college football playoff management committee – so, yeah. so what you have is you have a subcommittee, which I believe is the committee that actually picks the teams. I think. See, this is this is confusing too. Well, the uh, full no, the full committee picks the teams. Okay, so what's the subcommittee? Because there's there must be three committees then, because um, you have the full committee, which is uh, uh, the the uh, eleven. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's the ten conference commissioners. So the, the five power five conference commissioners and the five group of five conference Th commissioners. That's the management plus, committee. That's the right, CFP management the, committee. That's yeah. the management committee plus the Notre Dame athletic director. Yeah. The college football playoff selection committee yeah. is a totally separate um, committee. It's totally separate. And they are, it has yeah. nothing to do. Yeah, it, exactly. It doesn't, it doesn't include any of these people. The selection committee is a few athletic directors. Yeah. And then people like Condoleezza Rice. But they it's also no, it, it, refer to a, something called a subcommittee, which is the even subcommittee is the, the subcommittee is four of that group of eleven, and they are the ones that are coming up with all the different scenarios to expand the committee. If they can, if those four can agree on one expansion plan then they will present that expansion plan to, to the, the full management committee of okay. 11. Right. Okay. No, okay. So that, that clears it, that it's up. It's very confusing. No, there I, is three different committees. Yeah, there's I, the I understand that. The selection committee, which is – the selection committee is what we normally talk about. Yeah, they're, uh, the, ones the, season, they're the ones right? that – Oh, my God, the, these the idiots, they don't watch the games, and they're putting this team here. That's the selection committee. This is, uh, this is, this is something different here. But so – the way that this college football playoff management committee is comprised, it has a lot to do with what we're going to see whenever there is a change. And the reason that is, is because, uh, like you mentioned, there's the five power five conference commissioners and then five group of five conference commissioners, which is a kind of ironic that they would be included in this because it's been one of the big debates. Is, it, is there a real shot uh, in the four team system for a group of five team to get in there? And the answer is, I mean, a lot would have to happen. I'd say less than one percent chance on any given year. We saw it a few the years ago. No. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the, yeah. The answer is no. So we and, saw and it. That's a few. the problem. To me, the problem isn't that. To me, the problem is not that the group of five can't get in. It's that they pretend that they can. They they should have just come out and said, "Look, this is going to be a power five playoff." That's it. If, yeah. if you want to have your own, go ahead, but you're not getting in. I mean, they should just say that because they're they're not getting in. They're just not. It's just not going to happen under the current four team format. Right. No way. So that begs the question: uh, if you're if you're a commissioner of one of the uh, conferences in the group of five, what you're they're, what they're hiring you to do as a commissioner is to do what's best for your conference, right? That makes right. sense. Yeah. So the best way to get them involved in the in the in the current playoff system without having their own playoff system would be to put as many teams eligible for the playoff as humanly possible. Right? So if it comes down to some sort of a vote, like you, we mentioned the subcommittee, if they can agree on it, I'm assuming if they can't agree on it, then it goes to some sort of vote. 
That's why there's 11 people. Uh, the 10 conference commissioners plus the, the Notre Dame guy for a tiebreaker or whatever. Yeah, the, um, four, the four in the subcommittee, they have to all agree on one plan. Yeah, but if, that's what has to happen if, first. And then it goes to the full 11. And there is one uh, group of five commissioner in that four person subcommittee. So, you know, it, it's the Mountain West. Uh, it's the Mountain West uh, Conference Commissioner. OK, so, you know, he's in these meetings going, we need we need eight teams. We need 10. We, you, you know, he's advocating for expansion. Well, the, yeah, the question is the other three. Yeah, because they're they're already power five. My my worry is that with with the with the inclusion of the uh, the, the group of five commissioners and making decisions in this, that, that they're going to push for 16. Now, whether they agree on 16 or not is a different story, but I think it'd be a huge mistake. So just as a little bit of a backstory here, I think Uncle Lou and I both agree that we like the four team system, but we both come to the realization that that's just, it's inevitable that they're going to go somewhere above that. And I've sort of, I've, I've come to accept it. And I actually think if you go to six or eight teams or however that looks, it's, it's, you're, you're skating on thin ice there, but you, I think you can still maintain the integrity of the regular season, which is what we're both worried about here. Um, yeah, that, that's, it, my, that's my only concern. Obviously, uh, the playoffs are amazing. I mean, look at March Madness. I mean, March Madness is amazing, 64 teams. I don't but, – but regular college season basketball is pointless. It just means nothing. And college football regular season is the best regular season in all of sports, yeah. period. And it's not close. And I and and I, I like the four. If we go up to eight, I'm willing to accept that uh, without a lot of uh, hooting and hollering. If they do anything above eight, though, I, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna uh, cry on YouTube. Yeah, <laughs> it's just insane. I, I mean, they yeah. just won't make any sense. If they go well, to eight, it, it might not be my perfect scenario, but I'm willing to accept that. Yeah, and I and I think when you get into the 16 team realm, uh, it, it's it's extremely dangerous. Uh, I mean, it's, it's not only for the regular season, which it'll it'll severely impact the regular season, but it also it, it actually affects uh, the, the whole structure of the season because then you have to eliminate regular season games to make room for that. I mean, who's who's playing? I mean, how many games would that be? If, for, if you're the 16 seed right. and, you, and you make it all the way to the national championship by some miracle of God, which won't happen, but it, you know, one, once every hundred years, uh, how many games? Are you, what are you playing? Twenty games? What is that? Yeah, you're well. You're playing four additional. Yeah. If if, let, if they keep it at twelve plus one conference team, that's thirteen. And then if you make it to the title game, that would be a four additional. That'd be seventeen. Um, seventeen games. Yeah, and and, uh, and and listen, NFL players make millions of dollars a year. They fought tooth and nail to keep their season at sixteen games instead of seventeen. Now they lost, and it's going to seventeen. But that the NFL has been arguing about that for it took ten years for the NFL. To move from 16 to 17 games. I mean, these players are getting paid millions and don't want to play any more games than they have to. They already yeah. complain about the preseason. That is a lot of games to play. And then you're talking about now. Uh, what about you're going to have kids playing during Christmas? I mean, I mean, I don't. I'm asking. I don't know how how that would uh, work. Or are the playoffs going to last the entire month of January? Yeah. Do you still give a, a two and a half week break there from about December 10th through New Year's? Or, you know. And then start the playoff in January. Do you move the playoff up? Uh, Sixteen teams, I think, uh, would be a huge, uh, a huge mistake. Yeah, it would I mean. be a huge mistake. There's a lot that goes into that, and then you get into the uh, the, the idea of automatic bids, uh, buys, all this other sort of thing that comes along with adding more teams. And I think that I unfortunately I think that's inevitable as well. Uh, the auto bid thing, which I really do not like. Um, this is the example I always use with the automatic bid. It's, let's say you win your conference, you're automatically in, right? Uh, what was right. it? 2018, a seven and five pit team played Clemson in the ACC championship. Now Clemson destroyed them. It wasn't ever in question, but we've seen crazier things happen. Let's say Clemson lays a dud that day and Pitt plays the best game of their year and they beat Clemson. Then you have a, an eight and five ACC championship team in a playoff. And no, I don't really think anybody wants to see that. Maybe even not Pitt well, fans. And I'll tell you what'll happen if they go to eight teams or anything higher than that. Um, and 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 they don't make it. They're gonna they're gonna make it where conference champions automatically get in. And I, I think the reason why is if you go to uh, well, let's just do the extreme. If you go to sixteen teams, what is the point of playing in your conference championship game? 
There is no point. All it can do is hurt you. Yeah. It cannot help you in any way. If you're Alabama and you're sitting there at 12 and 0 or 11 and 1, why play Georgia or Florida in an SEC championship game the day before the playoff rankings come out? Um, or if you're, uh, let's not even use that because even even with a loss, Alabama might get in. Let's say you're, uh, let's say you're Oklahoma, and you're ten and two, or eleven and one. So you're probably going to get in if you win that Big Twelve title game. But if you lose, it could knock you out. Yeah. So I, I think they're going to make it where. Uh, the conference champions automatically get in just to save the conference championship games. Yeah, I, yeah. Uh, I, but I don't. I really don't like that either. But uh, but I understand that you know the thinking behind that. The, the other problem is you have players sitting out. We already have. I mean, it's already an epidemic in bowl games. Um, you start having player now. Look, you can save the integrity of the championship game by saying you have to win the championship game to get in there. But let's say you're uh, eleven and zero, and you know you already won your division. You have the, your rivalry game. Let's say you're Alabama. You've got to play Auburn the 12th game of the year, but you've already won your division. So what's the point of even playing your starters against Auburn? Yeah. You know, so it's, it, a, it's a great, a great point. Yeah. Uh, and, and you probably will. Cause look, uh, what happens in the NFL? We see this all the time in the NFL. A, a team is sitting there at uh, 13 and two, right? They've been wrapped their division up. They've got one game left. It turns into the second preseason game. The starting quarterback doesn't play. The star wide receiver doesn't play. Because why would they? The game yeah. means nothing at that point. And I don't want to see anything like that happen. But um, And you mentioned players sitting out. The reason we're given for, for players sitting out is that, well, now that we have a playoff, the bowl games are irrelevant. Well, if you expand the playoffs, the bowl games become even more irrelevant. Which means you're probably going to have more players sitting out. Now, obviously, the the, the teams that are in the playoffs, I, I'm going to assume, aren't going to have players sitting out. So, in that respect, maybe you get to see more players play, but in fewer games. But still, the bowl, you know, the the rest of the bowl games would become irrelevant. Yeah. Let, let me make a point about this. One more thing about this committee with Notre Dame. Okay, so the SEC commissioner is on this committee, right? Um, the ACC commissioner. They're advocating for 14 teams, right? They have 14 teams they're responsible for. Mm -hmm. The Notre Dame athletic director is in here. He <laughs> he has only one priority. Yeah, grand total of one team. I, I don't think that's right. And mm. and and Lord knows, um, I've got no love for BYU. Why isn't BYU's athletic director on this thing? That's a good point. Uh, they're they're a power five independent. Hmm. Um, why Notre Dame's that why is Notre Dame's athletic director get to get to get on this committee and advocate for one team solely? That's it. Whereas every other person on the committee has to advocate for ten, twelve, or fourteen teams depending on the conference. Um <laughs> now I I'm biased because I think Notre Dame needs to get in the damn conference already and I, I'm all for doing whatever we can do to pressure them into doing that. And but you don't have a lot of pressure points to push. I mean, the ACC had one last year and they blew it. Uh, you know, they could have forced Notre Dame to join or told Notre Dame, "You're not, we're not playing you this year." They, you know, they didn't do it. Um, the the playoff committee doesn't have to put. Uh, I mean, the, Notre Dame's <laughs> the only team with an athletic director who's on this committee. Well, you, everyone the, else is a conference if, commissioner. Yeah. If the question is why are they allowing Notre Dame's uh, athletic director to be a part of this uh, committee? The answer to that is so, so that he can tell the ACC commissioner what to do. That was, he yeah. needs, he needs, somebody needs to tell the ACC commissioner what to do. And nobody does a better job at that uh, than Notre Dame does. No, but I, I already have a huge problem with uh, going back to just the selection committee. I have a huge problem with athletic directors being on the selection committee. Yeah. I mean, this is just a terrible idea. Um, I, now, Georgia has finished fifth in the final playoff poll a couple, of, uh, a couple of times, and then they got in the one time. And I don't even think Georgia should have been in in those two years they finished fifth. So mm -hmm. I'm not saying that. But I am saying that in both of those years, the Florida Gators athletic director was on the selection committee. Yeah. The Georgia Tech athletic director right. was on the selection committee. Do you really think? that the Florida AD and the Georgia Tech AD 
are in that room adver- advocating for Georgia to get the four spot in any given year? Yeah, and no. then and then you know who else was on the committee? The Oklahoma athletic director. Yeah. Well, it, it was coming down to Georgia and Oklahoma for the so, four and five. Yeah, so you have. I mean, so you've got two yeah. two schools that are never going to vote for Georgia, and then you've got one school whose team is in the uh, debate. And, it's and, just a it's just a terrible idea. And then they they recuse the person who's you know say so let's say Georgia athletic director is on the committee that he gets recused, so he doesn't even get to be a part of the conversation while the while Florida and Georgia Tech and Oklahoma are out there making decisions for about their you know future. So I agree yeah, with you. People knock, oh, why is Condoleezza Rice on the compu- on the committee? Blah blah blah. I think it should be all Condoleezza Rices. Yeah, it should be people who are not employed by any college anywhere. Period. Yeah. Um. You know, now everybody has inherent biases. There's nothing you can do to eliminate that. I right. mean, you know, Condoleezza Rice graduated from somewhere, uh, Stanford, yeah. maybe whatever. I don't know. So you know, but still, that's better than having. A, a team's athletic director on on this thing, so there's just a whole host of problems. Now I'll, I will say this because I'm complaining a lot. This is why I love college football because nothing is objective; yeah. it's all subjective. And without subjectivity, we have nothing to debate or argue about. Well, we wouldn't be. There's never an argument in the NFL about who should have been in the playoffs right. or who shouldn't. And and look, the reason that is so great is the reason we're even having this conversation right now. Because right. without Agreed. the subjectivity, there would be nothing for us to talk about, like you said. Yeah. Now, yeah. so to, to, to go ahead and tie this up in, in a bow, uh, I, I think, that, you know, well, for at least the next two seasons, maybe the next f- uh, five, depending on how they do this uh, restructuring of the deal at the end of the thing, um, we're going to continue, people like me are going to continue to complain about the expansion, the, the inevitable expansion of it, and, and debate back and forth uh, what's the best way to do it? And there's a million different. It, it even said in this article they discussed sixty something different scenarios, you know, yeah, which is crazy. Uh, but and also in the meantime, well, I will have to list continue to listen to the people that all they do is complain about the four team system uh, every single year when it comes around to, the, to picking the playoff teams. If you, all you got to do is go on Facebook or Twitter and you'll see millions of posts. It needs to be sixteen. It needs to be eight. Just go ahead and get it done. It needs, so we're going to hear complaining from both sides until us until this thing uh, changes. Uh, but it is, in, it is inevitable that it changes, and, uh, and, that's, and that's it. I, you know, I just hope it doesn't ruin the sport. Yeah, my, my uh, prediction, uh, for anyone that cares, and again, this is something I've been saying for a while, I think they're going to go to eight teams. Mm-hmm. I think they're going to guarantee the five Power Five Conference champions a spot. I think they're going to guarantee the highest-ranked Group of Five team a spot and have two at-large bids that will go to the, the two highest ranked teams who didn't win their um, conference. You know, um, that, that's what I think is going to happen. When you look at the 11 person committee, that'll make the final decision, forget the, the, the four people are going to come up with a plan. They're going to present it to the 11. Those 11 are going to vote. There's six votes for yes, no matter what the plan is. Yeah. All five group of five commissioners and the PAC 12 commissioner, the PAC 12 has been left out of the playoff. What, uh, how many years did you say we've had this now? Uh, we're going into our eighth year. They've been in there twice. Yeah, so they've been left out all but two years. Yeah. Um, and I'm not saying they des- they didn't deserve to get in in, in a, in a four-team deal. They, they, you know, there hasn't been a year outside of those two years where they had one of the best four teams. So mm. I'm not suggesting they got screwed under the current format. They didn't deserve to get in. Uh, but the Pac-12 is going to vote for expansion, period, because they're not headed up. I mean, you know, they're not rounding some kind of bend and about to become great at football all of a sudden. Well, um, there's your you six. Know, there's so. your six votes. The, the 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 five group of five commissioners and and the Pac-12 commissioner. That's it. And, and I yeah. would I would venture to say that uh, Notre Dame's athletic director would vote for it too because they don't have a conference championship game. Yeah, yeah. So they might. Yeah, they most likely would too. Yeah. Especially if it if if what I think is going to happen does happen. Um, because lately, anyway, even the years that Notre Dame doesn't make the playoffs, they've been a top 10 or close to top 10 team. So there would have been several years under an 18 playoff where Notre Dame would have got in. So I'm, I'm pretty sure they would vote for expansion, too. And I, and what we'll see whenever there is eight teams eventually, I'm, I agree with you. I think that's where it's going to land. I, at least that's where I hope it lands. I hope it doesn't go over eight. But let's let's assume that it does land on eight. Uh, I think I will be proven correctly. So this is what I'm looking forward to is telling people I told you so. 
that it's not going to change the most likely who's the champion at the end of the year. I, I don't believe that it will. Maybe once every 10 years, you might see, you know, the, the seventh seed win a, a national title. But but I think you're going to, you know, the top four, it's going to be one of those top four most likely that wins it every year. I just, I just don't think on any given year, there's more than three or four teams at most, maybe sometimes five or six, yeah, possibly, uh, they can win the national title. So I think I'll be proven correctly on, on that. Hopefully. Yes, I agree. And what I would love for them to do is to take, if they go to eight teams, take those first four games and play them on the higher ranked teams campus. Please. Yeah. Please. That would give and then you-, you can keep the, you can keep the, you know, uh, then, okay, so you play the first round. Once you get to the second round, you're down to four teams. You can keep that as the peach, orange, sugar, rose, you know, fiesta, and cotton, the rotating deal. Yeah. You can still have that. But, man, give some of these college kids a chance to see their team play in a playoff yeah, no kidding, game. right? I, I mean, I know there's a lot of rich kids in, at college. I get that. But not the majority of them. And it was, I mean, it was solve on. another. You know how much it costs to go to a playoff game? I mean, it's prohibitively expensive. Even for someone who makes a decent living like me, I could never afford to go to a college football playoff game. No, I get that $1,000 you know, a ticket. Have it on a it campus is. and give these kids a chance. You know, sell 20000 at least student ticket to that uh, first round game. Yeah, and I'm... let Alabama host a playoff game. You know, let Ohio State, uh, whatever, Oklahoma, Georgia, Clemson, whoever makes it, you know, whoever's the higher rank. So you have one versus eight. The one seed plays at home. And that could solve another problem that we were talking about earlier with the, you may possibly sitting out a game because you've already got it wrapped up or whatever. Uh, you know, if you're playing for a home game, you might, you'd be less likely to sit your, your players. There you go. Yeah. There you go. That, yeah. Yeah. That's, so that solves several problems. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, I, I didn't think about that angle, but yeah, that's a great idea too. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah uh, take Alabama, for example. Okay, great. You're guaranteed to get into the playoffs. You got Auburn coming up. Why play? Well, it's a rivalry game, and if you lose, you might lose the you one. Could lose a, you could lose game. a home game. Yeah. Big, yeah. And that's a big deal. I mean, obviously, it's a big deal in a regular season. Yeah. It's even a bigger deal in, in the postseason uh, home right. game. So, yeah. All right. So, there you guys have it. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, Uncle Lou, I will see you tonight, man. Thanks for, uh, thanks for coming on. Yep. 10 p.m. Lunch Money Show. All it's right. about absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. Tune in. Thank you.